Welcome to this edition of the Rebel Rise Live podcast on this Monday, November 28th, 2016. I'm David Johnson, along with your co-host Dave Bevan. We're going to recap Saturday's Egg Bowl, break it down, talk about it a little bit. We're going to talk about the retirement of defensive coordinator Dave Walmack today and who might possibly be candidates for his replacement Are there other staff changes coming for this Ole Miss football team? We'll address that question as well. And recruiting has entered the final stretch. The Rebel coaches are out on the road, and uh, we'll see how this 2017 recruiting class is going to shake up. We'll give you our thoughts on that as well. First off, though, let's jump right into what we watch Saturday. Mississippi State 55, Ole Miss 20. It sounds strange to say. I'm still processing it based off of not what's transpired over the last month and a half of the season, but based off where we thought we were in August. Remember, this was supposed to be somewhat of a revenge game for Ole Miss. Not due to the results on the field the last two years, But all the the off-the-field scuttlebutt, the alleged implications uh, and allegations of Mississippi State fueling the fires, certainly publicly, but also behind the scenes in regards to the NCAA investigation, this was supposed to be the Bulldogs' day of reckoning. And the strip was flipped in a big-time way. First, that was not the Ole Miss football team that you saw play the month of September, or even the month of October for that matter. It was a lackadaisical effort. It was a terrible effort. It was terrible preparation. It was a terrible on-the-field effort as a whole. Of course, there were, there were some kids out there fighting their hearts out. To be honest with you, though, there were some out there that were just like, I don't want to go to the Liberty Bowl. I don't want to practice a whole month extra to go play in Memphis, Tennessee, on what's probably going to be a a rainy 34-degree day at 11 o'clock in the morning. I believe there was some of that that affected the Egg Bowl. And that's a shame. That's a shame. And it's not on the kids. Mind you, that's not on the kids. Team has to be held together. And and just judging from what we saw Saturday afternoon, a beautiful Saturday afternoon, inside gorgeous Vaught Hemingway Stadium, we all watched a, a nightmare unfold. Out of sight, out of mind, nobody wants to talk about it two days later. Ole Miss showed a little bit of fight after getting down, what, 27 to 10 in the first half. Come roaring back, make it 27 to 20. A couple things didn't go right early in the third quarter, and the floodgates opened. And it was poured on. Mississippi State, not a terrible football team, put its best foot forward on Saturday. Ole Miss did not put its best foot foot forward, and the result was the most humiliating Egg Bowl loss for the University of Mississippi in more than 100 years. And with a season of so many unexpected things that have happened to this football program, it's probably fitting that something unexpected happened in the last game of the season. Dave, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, uh, there there were uh, losses um, in in the season uh, that that could have been foreseen. Um, you know, you're you're going up and I mean, Ole Miss entered the season with one of the most brutal schedules in the country. They ultimately faced seven uh, nationally ranked opponents at the time they faced them out of. 12 games of the season. It, it was it was a tough task ahead of them. 
There was there was a game on that schedule that you just ultimately could not lose, and and it was against your arch rival, your in-state rival that you had had the um, the advantage, the upper hand, the, the the previous two seasons. And as you mentioned, you know you you had the um, the wanting the revenge of, of the. Um, off-season scuttlebug, you know, the the with the NCAA investigation, um, you, you wanted that revenge uh, with this. Well, with well, let, let, let's say this: the fans wanted it. The players obviously could have cared less. Could exactly. not have cared less about that. Exactly. Um, but you know, it, it it was a it was a game where um, you know Mississippi. It, it wasn't like a. a, a a close victory, um, a, a nail biter to the finish. Fans were emptying out of the stadium at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Very little um, uh, crowd left in it. Um, and then you, you had a Mississippi State team who uh, not only uh, set records, um, you know, with their with their quarterback uh, offensive records. Uh, the points that they put up was a was a record that had stood for a century uh, and was broken. And add injury to, to insult, I suppose. Get ready for this. It looks like Mississippi State is going to be one of the few five and seven teams that's going to go to a bowl game this year. Um, what we're hearing this morning it looks like the heart of Texas Bowl against Southern Mississippi. So. Here it is, two of Mississippi's three Division One football teams playing one another in a bowl game while the Rebels set at home 5-7 and seven and try to do something about this recruiting class. The big news on Saturday, other than the lopsided whooping in the Egg Bowl, was that Dave Womack publicly announced that he was done, retiring. Um, we certainly wish Dave well, 38-year career in college football. Not many people can say that. Not many people have the uh, the guts for that kind of durability in that profession, but Dave Womack did. Uh, it's sad to see the way he went out, went out with a terrible season and a terrible last performance. Um, but uh, he didn't have the bullets in his gun. He didn't have the players this year to do anything about what others were doing to him. And that lies on him, too, because uh, he's the guy signing off on those defensive players that Ole Miss recruits in here. And he's gotten some good ones, but uh, they've whiffed at the linebacker position. We'll talk more about that a little bit later on. Uh, you know, the thing on everybody's mind right now is who's going to be Dave Womack's replacement. Uh, you know, there there's a, there's a list of potentials out there. It's so early in the process right now that you're not – you're not really going to call this a short list. I think it's still wide open right now because, yeah, you know, although Hugh Freeze has probably known Dave was gone for quite some time now, uh, you know, there's a protocol and some standards you have to set where you're not calling around trying to steal somebody's defensive coordinator in the middle of their season. So things are really heavy on that front right now. And we'll have probably, you know, breaking news daily about that list and about who may may. We, who, who, we, who we might think is interested right now that may, you know, say, hey, don't consider me. Among the names, uh, Indiana defensive coordinator Tom Allen. We're all familiar with Tom. He coached linebackers here for a couple of years when he first got to to town. Uh, has done a great job as a defensive coordinator at South Florida and at Indiana, where he currently is. Uh, Auburn secondary coach, co-defensive coordinator Wesley McGriff. Same story as Allen. He was here on the original staff, stuck around a couple of years, left Ole Miss to go coach with the New Orleans Saints back in the college game this season over at Auburn. He was actually in Mississippi last night with Gus Malton at C.J. Avery's house doing an in-home. Colorado defense coordinator Jim Levitt, an excellent head coach at South Florida back in the late 1990s, had a lot of success with that program. Spent a couple of years in the NFL as a linebacker coach. Levitt has done a tremendous job, one of the best jobs in the country this year as a defense coordinator for the Colorado Buffaloes. Uh, you know, he's on the list as far as connections with Freeze and, and, and Ole Miss. Uh, he may be a long shot for that. Wake Forest defensive coordinator Mike Elko, just a guy who's gotten it done on the field. Uh, his roots are up in New England, Pennsylvania, uh, places like that, but uh, has done a really good job. Also, remember, he's a lead recruiter for Jeffrey Burley, a linebacker that committed to, to Wake Forest that Ole Miss is trying to flip up right now. 
Charlie Strong, I think that's just, uh, I mean, that's just Christmas decorations right there as far as this. I think the chances of Charlie Strong coming to Oxford, Mississippi as a defense coordinator are slim to none. Uh, Charlie doesn't have to work if he doesn't want to. A $10-plus million buyout uh, at Texas, and he already had millions in the bank. So we'll see what Charlie Strong does. Maybe he takes a year in TV. Uh, maybe not. But, uh, you know, he's a head coaching candidate, I would think, for some of these mid-major openings, and uh, some of those have opened up this morning. Gene Chizik, intriguing to me, uh, from what I'm told, is making about $300,000 a year as a defense coordinator at North Carolina. Uh, Chizik, another guy who's not really worried about his bank account, but Ole Miss certainly would be willing to pay a lot more than that if you got Gene Chizik uh, uh, interested in coming to Oxford, Mississippi. He's a great defensive coordinator. Uh, look, the guy won a national championship at Auburn uh, as a head coach. Um, you know, you would figure he's probably in the market to become a head coach again, but would he come back to the SEC and coordinate a defense? You know, that remains to be seen. But but that's going to be a major storyline moving forward. Now, will there be other staff changes? Nobody knows the answer to this for sure. And and, and I'm, I'm going to be just brutally honest with you. I don't want to speculate on anything regarding anybody getting fired out there at this point simply because, look, I know those guys. I see those guys. I mean, I'm just being totally honest with you. I mean, I don't want any of those guys to lose their job and have to sell their home and leave. Um, I understand it's a business, though. The likelihood of it happening, pretty darn good. I think you are going to see some some changes, perhaps some so multiple changes on the defensive side of the ball as a new defensive coordinator may have his own ideas about who he wants to coach certain positions and things like that. I'm not ruling out the possibility and the probability that there being maybe maybe one position change on the offensive side of the ball. We'll just have to uh we'll have to see. And some shuffling too. You may see some guys getting some different responsibilities than what they've had in the past. But uh those are the things moving forward into the month of December other than recruiting and we're about to talk about recruiting uh that's going to kind of uh Keep us captivated through the holidays, if you will, and all the way up until uh, a new year. Now, I will say this, you know, Tom Allen being a candidate uh, for this job, and of course he's been on this staff before, I just want to give you a little history about Allen. If it is Allen, I would say this, expect him, and I, and I haven't talked to Tom, and, I, and, and, and this is just speculation here. If Tom Allen were to be Hugh Freeze's choice, don't expect Allen to leave Indiana before their bowl game. He's not going to do it, in my opinion. And, and, and here's a little history on why. Tom Allen could have been the defensive coordinator at Auburn this year. I know this for a fact. Gus Malzahn wanted Tom Allen as his defensive coordinator after he turned South Florida's defense around two seasons ago. Malzahn had to have someone before South Florida's bowl game. Wanted him there in Auburn on the recruiting trail. Tom Allen refused to go. He said, I'm going to see this through with these players. I'm not going to leave before the bowl game. And he did not. That's the kind of guy Tom Allen is. Uh, the words honor and integrity mean something to Tom Allen. So if it were to be Tom Allen, I'm not saying it is. Uh, I would not expect Allen to be here until after the first of the year. And that's just kind of how, you know, just a little bit of insight on that. But, Dave, what, what did you make of, of the announcement of Dave Womack one hour prior to kickoff uh, that Ole Miss decided they were going to announce it then uh, instead of waiting until until after the game? Did you have a, an opinion on that either way? Well, you know, it, even if, I mean, it, regardless of, of any it, outcome. It was weird, weird timing, right? It, it was weird timing. I mean, it, it was something that, that you would have expected, uh, you know, after uh, a game. Um, you know, something that, that may even have been a surprise, of, you know, from a response from Dave, you know, after the game or, or an announcement by Freeze after the game. But to know that, you know, beforehand – you know, Ole Miss fans um, knew what the future uh, was in store for uh, prior to to kickoff. Um, you know, and and you know any questions that that were out there uh, prior to, 
to that, you now know. Um, it is a situation where uh, this is the first time for, for Freeze. I mean, it, it, Womack has been, you know, his coordinator uh, for his extent and as a head coach at, at the college level. Um, so th this will be a, a new situation for Freeze, and it, and it will be, um, you know, like you, David, uh, you know, Womack's uh, career, you know, deserves recognition. Being 38 years in the pr profession, he had uh, major success. Um, in this situation, it, it will be interesting to see uh, what Freeze does from here. Like you said, there there are names, you know, uh, first early possibilities out there that you've already mentioned thrown out there. Um, it will be interesting to see uh, if any of those routes will be taken or, if, you know, uh, newer names, different names pop up uh, down, down, you know, heading into his decision. But it will be interesting to see, um, you know, what he ultimately decides. And, you know, it, 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 it is a situation where, um, you know, uh, Freeze's uh, success moving forward is made by, by the decisions he makes right now. Uh, to continue the success that, that he has already built the program up to uh, prior to this season. And just an interesting uh, season all, all the way around. Uh, you know, you could look at that announcement as, you know, we're going to announce this an hour before game time, which I, I thought it interesting that uh, Marquis Saints said after the game he didn't know it. Um, you know, I know during the television broadcast, it was alluded to by Brent Musburger that they had informed the team the night before. Uh, but Marquis Ains, clear as day in the press conference after the game, said he he didn't know Dave Womack was retiring until someone asked him that question in there. And then uh, and then Womack's uh, you know response. I'm sorry, but Womack's response uh, after the game, he he had made that decision after the 2014 season. And, and he had felt like it was inevitable, um, you know, over the summer months. So, you know. Well, lesson learned on that. If, if a guy tells you he's going to retire and he's working towards retirement, you might want to go ahead and make the change. I'm not saying that – I'm not saying Dave could have done anything differently with that defense this year because it was player poor, but uh, particularly a linebacker. But uh, it didn't work out in hindsight, um, and, and it turned out to be quite – the mess. All right, let's talk a little bit about recruiting. We know that, uh, you know, kind of the page has been turned now. There's no bowl game for Ole Miss this year. So a lot of our coverage is going to be focused in on recruiting, um, which is a lot of fun to follow. Um, it's not necessarily a lot of fun to cover. Things change by the hour. Uh, um, uh, you know, I'm told I'm told this morning by an inside source, Ole Miss feels very good about Javon Kinlaw, a, a defensive lineman down at Jones County Community College right now. Um, and then now there's a story coming out from Ryan Barto, 247 national writer, who's spoken to Kinlaw, who says he's not really an Ole Miss guy. He doubt if he doubts now if he comes on his official visit to Ole Miss on January 21st. So, you know what? What's the real deal right there? Well, Freeze and Matt Luke saw Ken Law yesterday uh, down at Jones Community College in, in South Mississippi. Uh, you know, so did he say this prior to Freeze and Luke's visit to to the Jones campus yesterday, or did he say it afterwards? Uh, don't know. We'll figure all that out uh, throughout the day today, and just kind of see uh, the timing of this. Uh, but we do know that after the Ole Miss coaches visited him yesterday down at Jones Community College, Jones Junior College, um, they left there with a good feeling about him. Uh, you know that that there could be a possibility that uh, that that they could get in on him, but that is the intrigue of recruiting in this time of the year, folks. I, I mean, again, things are going to change hour by hour. You know, uh, a lot of the information is good. Some of it's going to be bad information. I mean, you're 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 milking every source you possibly can uh, as 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 these things kind of. Uh, take shape. And, and and let me say this, 10 commits in the Ole Miss class right now, look, they're looking to sign between 21 and 23, so there's a lot of action. 
that's going to take place over the next several weeks on the recruiting front. Uh, you know, there they're going to be highs, there are going to be lows, peaks, and valleys. And uh, But this, I promise you this, the run up to National Signing Day this year will be anything other than boring. Uh, in the years past, you know, we've kind of been setting at a point at the end of November, heading into December, that the class was pretty much set, maybe four or five drama things out there that were yet to be settled. Not the case this year. I promise you. It, it, it's the wild, wild west uh, heading into uh, into the stretch run here. Look, if they sign 23, 13 spots, that's a lot, to, a lot of commitments that's going to be going on in the next two months. Uh, even if they sign 21, 11 spots left. And out of those 10 that they have right now, uh, you know, Levante Epson, the offensive lineman, you know, we've been telling you it's a long shot for him to qualify academically. We still think it is. Talking to some JUCO coaches, they're, uh, they're kind of salivating over the opportunity to get him. So we don't think he'll count against those class numbers. Now, that could change. Maybe he pulls an ace out of his pocket and he gets qualified, but right now we don't think so. There's a player or two on there that I, I'm not sure Ole Miss uh, is, is going to cross the finish line with that's on the current commit list right now uh, by, quote, unquote, mutual decisions there. Um, so, so a lot of action to be had. You know, a lot of concern about the linebacker position and and and. Certainly, uh, that that's 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 where the concern should be when, when you look at it. But you know, I I think Ole Miss is going to finish with a with a pretty decent linebacker class right now. And I put this up on the rise Sunday night. But uh, you know, you got Josh Clark, and I spent a long time on the phone with Josh last night. And um, Josh is solid. Josh is solidly committed to Ole Miss, and he's recruiting his tail off behind the scenes. I can see Ole Miss taking five linebackers in this class. Lord knows they need to. All right, Josh being one of them. But the other four I see right now, and again, remember the sands can change under our feet each and every day, even sometimes by the hour. Breon Davis, who just left the campus this morning on his official visit, four-star out of Grayson, Georgia, really came from out of nowhere. Ole Miss started hitting him really hard maybe a couple of months ago on his recruitment, saying, hey, is it too late for us to get involved with you? He said no, and they have done a fantastic job of recruiting Breon Davis, uh, and, and I've spoken to him often this weekend. Uh, i got a pretty good rapport with him. He was giving me updates throughout his uh, weekend official visit. I'll have something up on the site here in a little bit uh, to cap that off, but I feel like Breon Davis is in. Now, things can change. He says he's still probably going to Louisville on his official visit this coming weekend, but, but I think he's linebacker number two in this class. The other three, if they go with five, Nathan Proctor, Jeffrey Burley, who's currently committed to Wake Forest, but Wake Forest was in Jeffrey Burley's house last night on an in-home, so they're fighting to keep him. And then probably Adonis Thomas, the former Alabama signee that's at Northwest Mississippi Community College right now. I think that's how your linebacker class is going to shape, shape out. I am probably wrong, as wrong can be, sitting here on November the 28th on how this is going to shape out. Shape out, shake out, whichever way you want to look at it. But if I had to call it today, that's how I would call it. And Clark is working all of those guys with the exception of Thomas. I don't think Josh Clark and Adonis Thomas have a connection. But Breon Davis, Nathan Proctor, Jeffrey Burley, Josh Clark is working them all saying, hey, come to Oxford, let's build a linebacker core. And out of those guys, I don't know if any of them are going to be Impact players as true freshmen. I mean, I think you're looking, you know, with Clark, Davis, Proctor, and Burley, you know, maybe one of them emerges as somebody who can help next year. I think that's why you've got to have a little Juco flavor to this linebacker class as well to try to get some more help in. And, and it may not be as bad as, as we anticipate either. If you can get a little help from this 17 class coming in, and, and Dietrich Bean Dukes gets another year under his belt, and Demarcus Gates is, is coming back, and, and you have Dante Evans who took a red shirt this year who might can start helping, and Willie Hibbler continues to develop at the position, then maybe you can put together a formidable group of linebackers. Remains to be seen what defensive scheme they're going to be playing in. 
Uh, it's not going to be primarily the four two five. I think that we're safe to say that at this point, Dave. Yeah, yeah. Um, the 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 four two five, uh, you know, could could be out. I, I'm I'm a fan of a, a of a four four three, uh, but with a four three, the three uh, part of it is you you got to have three linebackers in there, and you got to have the personnel, you know, to do that. And and that's where that's where uh, recruiting comes in. It, and you know. There were times this season I wish they would have lined up in a 9-2 and just just hope the wide receiver would drop the ball out there on the edge. I, I mean, it was it was that bad. I, I mean, in order to stop the run, I mean, that, that yeah, and, like and that's I, what you I, needed to do. I had two conversations with two Ole Miss linebacker prospects this weekend. And I, I don't mind to Josh Clark and Breon Davis. Long conversations with both of them, and both of them were totally amazed at how bad the linebacker play at Ole Miss was this year. I, I mean, they couldn't. I mean, they were literally mind boggled by how bad and how, how terrible they were at fitting gaps and, and and wrapping up and making tackles. And 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 the crazy thing is, neither one of them viewed it as a negative. They viewed it as a positive. Of I'm going to be able to go in there and make a difference and make a difference early. I can help this defense. They feel wanted. They feel needed at Ole Miss. And it's kind of weird how that might might help them land a pretty solid linebacker class in 2017. But go ahead, Dave. Yeah, I mean, um, where where. You know, we, we earlier mentioned, you know, with uh, their, you know, with Freeze, you know, he he needs to hit a home run uh, with with uh, uh, bringing in a, a defensive coordinator. Whether that, you know, home run is is, is someone who has that uh, past resume or, or an up and comer. You know, uh, I, I believe Freeze needs to go out there. What he said in his press conference, he needs to grab the guy that that he wants an ideal. Candidate for him is, is someone who is energetic and and you know uh, has the same view as, as their core values with, within their program, um, and and I believe in adding into that. Uh, in my opinion, uh, what would help you is, is someone who who has some success at, at developing uh, linebackers, um, and and if you have someone you know who who is you know, has that, that form of resume, it, it, it builds that interest, you know, for, you know, prospects coming in, uh, in into this upcoming class. It, it brings their interest. Uh, there, there's a lot of interest that, that brings in with a, a new defensive coordinator, uh, the, depending on, you know, where, they, where they're coming from. You know, you, you, you have their ideas on, on, on targets as well and, and uh, recruiting relationships that they've built up along the way. So uh, those, are, those are some things that, you know, can be looked forward to, to um, you know, Freeze's decision on this. And that's what will keep us getting up every day right now, recruiting, uh, defensive coordinator search. Are there going to be other staff changes? Uh, all of those things, storylines right now for uh, this Ole Miss football program after a, a disheartening and disappointing 5-7 and seven season that ended with a hum- humiliating loss to your arch rival. And i got to tell you, folks, I, I didn't see this coming. I did not see this coming. Now, I'm not going to say I didn't have others whispering things in my ears telling me, it's coming. This is going to happen Saturday. And these were Ole Miss people now. They're not zoned in. It's going to happen. I didn't believe it. I did not believe it. No way in the world I saw that coming. But boy, oh boy, it did it. And... um you know, it's a rivalry game. Lord knows anything can happen, and anything did. Vanderbilt beat Tennessee Saturday. Vanderbilt. So just go out and, uh, you know, everybody's been talking for three weeks now about, well, Vandy can get in the bowl, you know, at 5-7 and seven due to their APR, their outstanding APR. Derek Mason and his guys are like, we don't want to hear that crap. We're going to get in. We're coming in through the front door with six wins, and they did. And, and, and that was uh, that was fun to see. 
Um, wasn't fun to see him beat the daylights out of Ole Miss the week before, but but it was fun to see Derek Mason uh, get Vandy into a bowl game with six wins and not having to back backdoor in like that. Um, I tell you, I think uh, this guy, man, if he capitalized on Vandy winning six this year, much like Hugh Freeze did in his first year in Oxford, Mason's a good recruiter. Kids want to play for him. I mean, the biggest problem up there at Vandy is, you know, they got to be smart kids to get in school. I mean, Vandy has some some limitations on who they can bring in due to their academic standards, and that's a difficult thing inside the Southeastern Conference when you're not playing on the same level uh, of of requirements as the other 13 institutions in the conference. That's that's tough for them to. Uh, to, to, to keep up, so to speak. All right, Dave, uh, let's wrap this one up. What are your closing thoughts today? Well, you know, it, you know, this, like we had said in the in this podcast, this is a uh, this is the first you know time experience uh, you know under under the freeze era for for Ole Miss fans, and um, you know, to to me, it, it will be interesting to see um, how uh, freeze. Uh, t- uh, uh, turns it around um, in in this off season, um, you know. It, it, and he mentioned in his press conference on Saturday that you know it, he he's looking forward to that. You know, he's ready to get back on the recruiting trail, which you know, as you mentioned, David, of uh, you know, this coaching staff ha- has already done. Um, you know, the the coaching profession it, it, it's a it's a tough. Um, it's a tough profession, you know. You, you see it with, with Charlie Strong, you know, out, out in Texas, who, you know, b- being replaced with Tom Herman, and um, you know, Les Miles, you know, his, his uh, career was decided on on a on a final play, you know, at the beginning of the season, and then you and then you have a, a guy like uh, Mark Helfrich out in Oregon. Who you know, two years removed from sending his team to a national championship in the first college football playoffs, um, in his first losing season as a head coach. Now reports out there that you know Oregon's going in a different route. Um, so you know, every coach you know realizes that those possibilities are out there. Um, you know, I, I for one. You know, Freeze absolutely deserves this opportunity. You know, to um, have that opportunity to turn this program around from the outcome of this season. Um, you know, first and foremost is, is what he has done. He has sent this program to to wins that it has not seen in over 40 years, and you know, accomplishments over you know ranked teams that it had never seen before. And you know, he is in a situation, as I mentioned, you know, he, had, he has never been a, in, in this, you know, type of situation before as a, as a head coach. And, you know, he has an opportunity now to, you know, turn things around and move him forward. I liked how you pumped a little sunshine there. <laughs> um, I mean, here's where I'm at. It's critical mass with this program. I'm going to shoot you straight. And you guys know, I, I, you guys know. How I feel about Ole Miss. I mean, I, I have a son playing there, but I'm going to shoot you straight. It's critical mass time. All right, this program's not in a good spot right now. The recruiting class is is what, 58th in the nation, last in the SEC. You just got beat by 35 points by your rival on your home field. There's an ongoing NCAA investigation that, that, that's going to end, and it's not going to be good. Those things are never good. I mean, that's, that's the, the truth and reality of where, where things sit right now. Yeah, they won the Sugar Bowl last year. That was last year. This year's this year. I weighed 235 last year. I'm, I'm up to 248. I ain't going back to 235 probably. If I do, it won't be a healthy way. You get what I'm saying? I, I, I mean, you know, it, it's you know, you guys subscribe to our site and listen to us, read the stuff we write because we, we try to give it to you truthfully. And the truth of the matter is, again, let's recount. 
in a season in which a lot of people were talking about you being a college football playoff dark horse, you go five and seven. You finish dead last in the SEC West. You lose to your arch rival fifty five to twenty, the worst defeat to them in over a hundred years. Your recruiting class right now is is ranked dead last in the Southeastern Conference, just like you said in the standings. And it's not it's not yeah, I hope you don't pay me to pump sunshine. Because I'm not gonna do that. And the dark cloud of the NCAA investigation, which is already ripping th- things to shreds within the program, I, I, and it is. If you don't think there's a, not a correlation in what you watched on that football field this year from this football team, and that NCAA investigation, I'll, I'll sell you some oceanfront property in the Mississippi Delta. It's all intertwined. And I, I mean, just put yourself in, in that spot. I mean, I mean, football coaching is, is is part of real life. If you're working in an office, and there's an IRS investigation or an FBI investigation going on about wrongdoing inside your office that could possibly cost people their careers and livelihoods, you'd go to work in a little bit different frame of mind every day too, would you not? I mean, I, I present to you that that there's no different that 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 you know coaching football is still in the in the arena of life, and those human emotions are 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 in there with with with, with everything that's going on in the environment that you're in. And now, can they fight out of this? Yes. Is Hugh Freeze the guy to lead them out of this? Wilderness? Yeah. He's proven he can do it. The program is in a lot better shape today than what it was when Hugh Freeze took this job on a cold, rainy December day back in 2011. The roster was full of Division II football players. Billy Brewer told me that. I was talking to Coach Brewer one day in the midst of that 2-10 and season, and we were actually... Inside Vaughn Hemingway walking on the field for some reason. And I asked him, I said, Coach, what, what is the deal? He said, man, there's too many Division II football players on this roster. He's right. So that's what Hugh Freeze took over and was able to raise his program up. This program is not in that kind of shape right now. It's much better. There's talent on the roster. A lot of good talent. So can they find themselves a way out of this? Yes, absolutely they can. But at the same time, you know, you are what you are at any given time. You are exactly what you are at any given time. Well, they are what they are right now. Five and seven, dead last in the SEC West. Tied for Missouri for dead last in the whole 14-team conference. A recruiting class in 2017 that's ranked dead last in the SEC, 58th in the nation. A team that just lost to their arch rival, 55 to 20, and a football program about to be put on probation by the NCAA. To what extent, we're all still waiting to see. And those NCAA sanctions, as we said, they're all, they're not, they, they haven't even been imposed yet. Final penalties have not been announced, but they're already hammering away at this program. And that's where we're at on this Monday, November 28th. Moving ahead, I do think it's going to be an exciting recruiting cycle. I think it's one that you're going to start to see. And this is this is a point I want to make. You're going to see Hugh Freeze's resiliency from now until National Signing Day. They're going to pull off some things that you're not expecting them to do. As a boomerang effect of this terrible 2016 season, they're out there fighting for it right now. And good things are going to happen between here and National Signing Day. I'll make that prediction. 
That's going to do it for us on this Monday, November 28th. If we haven't said that enough, we just want to make sure you know what day of the week it is. Because I know how it is, man. You get to rolling in this recruiting stuff. Dave, some mornings I wake up, I don't know if it's Monday or Tuesday. It is Monday. No bowl game to worry about. So enjoy your holidays. Follow the coaching search. And get ready for some 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 good things to happen on the recruiting trail. I think it's coming. For Dave Bevan, I'm David Johnson for Rebels 247 and 247 Sports. And until next time, hotty-totty.